Glad I figured that out now. Okay, so, um, so I realized, so I, I looked at the BCA Burlington City Arts Grant. And I was like, okay, I need to think of an art idea. And this idea just came out of nowhere. And it was inspired from my student that I've been working with for a few years. And she's working on her cane technique and she's a bit distracted. And we were walking in the snow one time and <laughs> I was giving her some feedback and I noticed her just looking at her the, the design her cane was making. And I was like, are you just looking at that and like not listening <laughs> to me? And that's where I realized, A, this looks pretty cool. And B, it's actually a great tool for your student if they can visually see it to kind of, you can use it as feedback and information of um, what your cane stroke looks like for any hot, just a little hot tip about the snow. And so that image kind of stayed in my mind. And out of that came my idea to do a sidewalk mural made from cane strokes and then I thought, oh, and we could add guide dog paw prints and it could be this type of like visibility piece. And in my head, I was like, wow, this is kind of a really good idea. Like maybe I could apply to this grant. And so I started to apply to the grant and then I realized you have to have a portfolio of six pieces of art. And I was like, oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> So I just continued, but I told the idea to a friend and they sent me a link to this community grant and it fit perfectly um, in those criteria about bringing diversity to community. Um, and so I, I believe my friend gave it to me on a Tuesday and it was due on a Thursday. And I was like, you know what, Shelby, let's just do it. So I, I applied and um, on the right, there's a picture of where I proposed the mural be the mural to be, which is outside of this studio called Sangha Studio in um, downtown Burlington. And Sangha means community in Sanskrit. And the woman who runs the business, I've known her for ever since I moved to Burlington. And she's worked with my students in the past. She's had them as interns and she just creates a really inclusive space. And so I immediately thought, let's do it outside of here and she agreed. And so um, the picture of the proposal was, is made on Procreate with a stylus. And um, it's just has the black sidewalk with the zigzag lines and the paw prints and a large sign. Um, so I, the grant that I, per, I applied to was not, there was a certain amount of money and then you were granted smaller amounts. And so I, at, my idea was to hire visually impaired people to help me um, paint this. And I really wanted that to be a piece of my project, hiring people. Um, but that was not allowed. So I asked for $1,650 and I was granted $880. And the sign for my project was the bulk of my cost. It was about $600. It's a sign that has pictures and braille on it. And I spent out of pocket around $100. So the real cost, and, and I made a lot of mistakes. So um, the real cost was around 980. So I would say um, at a minimum, you'd really want to request, if you want to make one of these, I would request a minimum of $1,000. Um, and again, I don't really know how much a sign would cost for you in your community. Um, but for me, you know, um, the supplies and a few snacks, a little bit of gas money um, that I was able to gift um, and, and the sign um, all costs around $1,000. So um, I wanna talk a little bit about the facilitation and then about, I'm gonna just explain the photos here to describe the execution. 
So if you can imagine, this takes a lot of um, planning, excuse me, the coordination, um, because I had three different cane users, one guide dog user, and I needed them to um, be get transportation and walk and um, be a part of this. So it involved um, a lot of planning. And so that was certainly a challenge of getting everyone's schedules aligned. And then I wanted, I had two um, former students of mine who are artists and they were there too, helping me facilitate. So it was a lot of planning. I, I'm someone who likes to get everybody involved. If you care less about that, it might be easier. <laughs> um, and so the first photo I have here is a picture of the sidewalk without anything on it. It's roped off with posts and um, tape. And the mural ended up being 11 sidewalk squares long. It's about half a block, give or take. Um, and then the next I have a photo of the tactile map that I made. Um, and the map is made from pictures in a flash. I don't know if you all use that, but it's essentially um, a map of the area of where the mural was, was going to be. There's a table, there's the door, compass directions, and then the actual um, idea of the design, um, which was helpful to show my participants who um, had no light perception. And so in the last photo on this slide, there's a picture of me showing my student um, the plan for the day and the plan for the mural. And I know he really liked it. So that was helpful. Um, I have a picture of me with a guide dog licking my face. It's a little bit deceptive because it looks like he's liking it, but he definitely didn't. Um, but it's a picture of a black lab guide dog giving me a lick while I put chalk on his paws. And this chalk is the type of chalk that rock climbers use. So it's like a big brick um, and it doesn't go on very like thick. It's like kind of a light dusting, which was certainly um, challenging. I think going into this project, I did not know how I was gonna pull this off and it was certainly tricky. Um, and I can talk a little bit more later when I go into the supplies about how I ended up doing the paw prints because it, and I'm sure you all probably have better ideas. And again, this is just um, sharing you all sharing with you all what I did. And I, I'd love to hear later about your thoughts of, of how to make this easier and better. Um, the next photo is another participant and she has chalk um, duct taped to the end of her cane. And so this is essentially how we um, created the lines. And so the sidewalk is black and she's walking over zigzag lines that have been made by people before her. And she's going over, she's the final stroke. I do wanna mention here, so there are some lines that are more rounded and there are others that are sharper. And so the, the lines that are have a point at the end, that's when I asked um, the participant. So he uses two point touch. And I was like, how am I gonna get two point touch conveyed here. And so instead of just lifting his cane in the air, I had him touch on one side and then drag quickly to where the other point that he would be using. And so that's how we were able to um, show the differences in the cane techniques. Um, so they're, yeah. And so, the last slide here is um, one of the people I had helping me. Um, she's an artist and she happens to be visually impaired. And she is going over the chalk 
with um, the paint. And I want you to know that we did go right over the chalk with paint. We, we wiped it away a little bit, but um, it was fine to have the paint contact the chalk. Um, next is a photo of my, the other artist I had helping me. And it's um, a picture of the progress of the um, mural. So now there are more colored lines, there are orange paw prints, um, but it's in the dark. It's being done at night. I, I have a, a job with Zabby, so I had to do this after work. And luckily, Sangha Studio had a spotlight that worked for her vision and my vision, but the other student wasn't able to, or excuse me, not a student, another, the other person wasn't able to um, help at night. Um, but yeah, it was a little hardcore. <laughs> um, next is a photo of me wearing a mask and spraying over the sealant. Um, and it, the, the sidewalk looks like it's in its final stages, but where the spray paint is spraying, it's darker and um, kind of making it brighter. Um, the next is a picture of the sign. And the sign is the sign that is next to the mural. And I'll read it for you all. It says, walk your own path. And there's a picture of the guide dog participant, or the person and her guide dog. <laughs> and um, a picture of the close up of a block of the mural. And it says, walk your own path is a sidewalk mural created from cane strokes and guide dog paw prints. This project tells the story of how some of our blind and visually impaired neighbors access our community. Description of mural. Bold, colorful zigzag lines and paw prints create contrast on black painted sidewalk. Pink, green, and blue lines represent three different cane users and orange paw prints represent a guide dog user. Starting from the north end of the sidewalk facing south, the mural begins after the driveway of the complex and ends before the entrance of the apartments by the city bike rack. And below that, there is the braille version of that. It's kind of hard to see that in this photo. Um, and then it says this project was funded by um, my, the ward and the names of people who worked on it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my mistakes because, you know, the, the day where the sign was installed was a huge celebration. Um, and the path to get there was very long. Um, and a lot of things went wrong because of my optimism <laughs> and my inexperience. Um, so I wanna first talk about the major mistake I made, which was pretending like rain wasn't a barrier. And that was certainly not the case. So. As I mentioned, this project took a lot of coordination and um, and I'll talk more about the timeline later, but I just put so much time and effort into it. Oh, I think someone's unmuted. You can mute yourself, please. Um, so, I had put a lot of planning into it. The, the news, the main newspaper in Vermont was supposed to come and do an article on it for um, this, the fourth out of fifth days of five days that I planned on doing it. And um, it was supposed to rain that weekend. And I was like, well, I'm still doing it because I have to. <laughs> The newspaper is coming and so I had had the first day I had started it I painted the sidewalk white with um with primer then I had I painted it black then I had two people 
walk on Friday and then Saturday was like the big day where the final people were coming and the, um, the newspaper was coming. And I was like, well, we're gonna do it. And so I just decided a good idea would be to get easy up tents, like these giant like camp, like tents that people use camping to like hang out under. And I was like, I'll just put up easy up tents on the sidewalk and it'll keep it dry, which is a really um, optimistic and far out idea. And <laughs> it didn't work. And um, in this picture, the white primer that is under the black is becoming exposed. Um, it was it was exposed for two reasons. One, because it got wet and the tents just still let water in. And also because people started riding through it. It wasn't until that final day, maybe it looked fun to ride in, I don't know. But there were clear bike um, prints and footprints and dog prints um, going through it. And you could even see it around on the sidewalk. Like you could see black um, because people had gone through it. And I was, uh, if you can imagine, I was a little disheartened and a little exhausted and um, kind of fired up. And in that, it, and it made me think of one of my students who I was working with um, to work with her to create a white cane awareness day video for her school because when she contacts people with her cane sometimes she'll say excuse me but kids are just they have their headphones in or they're looking at their phones and they're oblivious and it just got me thinking I was like this is like a microcosm of her experience and people are just oblivious and it's really it's it's really frustrating. And so I had decided that I had to tell the newspaper that they couldn't come. And my thought was, oh my gosh, finally, I've been really wanting to work on bridging the gap between sighted and visually impaired communities. How about if you guys instead write an article about etiquette and how to best practices when engaging with visually impaired folks? I was like, this is perfect. It'll be in the paper. Now everyone will know. And people will feel like they have the tools to be better engage. And so they said they couldn't do that. <laughs> and that gave me all the more reason to talk to the studio. And I was like, Caitlin, October is Disability Awareness Month. We have to do something next year. And so she was like, yeah, we're going to do something. And so, um, Rain was in the forecast for the next week. So I, we had to start over from scratch. We had to wipe everything away. And I needed a new strategy because I couldn't count on trusting the people of the city as much. I mean, they had, they didn't walk through the paint until the fourth day. So I knew that there was like some trust for my community but I knew I needed to get this done as quickly as possible. So I couldn't restart it until the next weekend. And I changed my strategy just to use spray paint. And I also was even more intentional with roping off the area and made it harder for people to go through. I made there more layers of the tape and tighter. Um, and so I definitely don't recommend um, trying to do this in the rain. Um, another mistake I realized right as the sign was getting delivered is that I had the braille too low on the um, sign. So you can see my friend here, he's reading the braille, but he's, he's tall and he's crouching down. And my town, one of the big um, points of approving, they, they were very specific on what the sign could be. So it had to be a sandwich board sign. Um, so it depends on what kind of sign you have, but if you um, are doing this and have a sign like mine, put the braille higher, or we can talk about more options later. Um, great. Next, I wanna talk a little about supplies. Um, and I won't go into great detail about everything because you all, 
will have access to this. Um, talk about primer, um, using matte colors so it's not creating glare. Um, and like I mentioned, spray paint. So regular paint takes hours, if not days to dry, but spray paint takes like 15 minutes. So I ended up, so this is where like my out-of-pocket expenses started adding up, but it's honestly was worth it. It was certainly worth it. And um, I used, it was about one can of spray paint per block. So it was 11 just for the black um, spray paint. It depends if, you're, if your spray paint doesn't need a primer, um, that also affects um, how much you need to use. Um, I put a link here for the colored paints that I used. I really, I'm a big fan of them. I think they looked really nice and were really sharp. And I wanted a nice high contrast brightness. Um, May I ask so, a question about the paint? Sure. Um, so I'm just imagining my skills with spray paint. How did you prevent that kind of splatter of like the, cause yours look like they have really sharp edges and I just imagine Thanks. mine would not look like that. Is yours can definitely look like that. I'm not a super neat person. I mean, I had painters tape on the edges and you can also add drop cloths, um, but I don't know if you saw the picture of me. I'm really close to the ground. I'm not even sure if my attic hits correct. <laughs> That's like as close you're supposed to be, but I'm like probably six inches from the ground. Um, so there wasn't too much um, spray. And then the the green, blue, pink, and orange, the like different patterns of the strokes, that is spray paint or no not? so that's the paint i'm talking about these color paints um okay. that are i got them on amazon they're called chroma mural paints um i didn't use all the colors because not all of them are bright there was like black, purple and white that i didn't use and there was a, there was a beautiful orange in there but i realized as i mentioned one of my like um things I was very uncertain about going into it was how I was going to figure out how to do the dog paw prints. And I ended up using spray paint because what I did, and I'm sure there's a better way. <laughs> what I did, well, so first I put the chalk on the dog's paw prints and then had him walk and I had to reapply a few times. And then we were only really able to use that to create a pattern because it just was so fuzzy that the, um, the chalk is very light. Um, and so what I did is I kind of used it as a guide and I ended up creating um, like two sets of like two paw prints out of, I, um, did it use an exacto knife and some cardboard? Or well, I use like thick paper. Really, you should be using cardboard, but for some reason, I couldn't find it, which makes a sense. <laughs> um, and so, what we did, so then we needed to, because I wanted something sharp to, so it actually looked like a dog's paw print. So, Abshiro's uh, amazing idea was to get water on the dog's paw print, and then we had the dog just do a few footprints on a piece of um, like a, a brown paper bag. And so I had to quickly, after it walked on there with water, I quickly traced it with the Sharpie because it started fading away because it started drying. So there's gotta be a better way than that. This is, this is what I did. Um, but figuring out how I definitely recommend and, and again, if you can figure out a better way to make the dog's initial paw prints, that's most ideal. But um, the uh, stencil ended up working nicely and I'm really glad because I, I was a little, I didn't want it to look like a cartoon, like dog's paw prints, I wanted it to look like a real dog, but it worked out with the X-Acto knife and the spray paint. Um, yeah, and I did have to do a little touching up because that spray paint 
because I was spray painting on the black and sometimes that would get on the edges, but I tried to like kind of guide the paper up to keep the spray in. Um, next, you're gonna need a matte sealant. So this is my um, biggest um, challenge is that um, I had to order all my supplies in June because that's the way the um, grant worked and I didn't end up doing it until October. So I had ordered this sealant but it was high gloss, which I later learned would be too slippery. And so I ended up using spray paint sealant, which is not strong enough for the Vermont winter. So unfortunately, currently the mural does not look great. So just full transparency, the mural has looked better. We're gonna redo it. Me and the people at the Yoga Studio are gonna do it, but it's still there. It's just the sealant was, that I could get, it was out because of the pandemic, because of the supply chain work. So I really recommend um, one of these that I have here links to, and I'm still doing more research on it, but um, it's really important to have that because especially if you live somewhere where there's salt and snow. And mind you, this is a challenge of anything, any sidewalk mural, it's just not gonna last that long. When I proposed this idea, again, no mural experience. And I was like, I will retouch this every year and it will last forever. And they were like, that's not gonna happen. This will be a year project. And I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever you guys say, I just wanna do this project. So there was a lot of that, um, you know, just wanting to be able to do it and following the rules of the city. Um, so yeah, just some more details about, you know, um, I had to buy like the wooden stakes, um, you know, paint trays and caution tape or rope. Um, I made some signs, um, different brushes. You could use drop claws. Um, and initially I'd only had that, um, chalk, the, um, chalk that, climbers use, but then my student who had done it with me, we realized it wasn't good enough. So they ended up buying me this whole case of the thick sidewalk chalk and that worked great. If you just duct tape a big stick of it, like the thick kinds, um, again, just make sure it's tight. That works really nicely. Um, <clears throat> duct tape, exacto knife, cardboard. Um, and then I wanna mention, this is a really important thing that I learned. Um, you're gonna need like brooms and buckets of water. I mean, a hose, if you have access to it is most ideal. When putting the sealant on, you really need to clean the sidewalk because all that chalk. So I just figured I need to make sure after people, after the people walked on the sidewalk with the chalk, I was coloring it in extra hard so that my, um, the folks who are visually impaired like could really see the line. And I do caution um, like being frivolous with the chalk because it just creates more residue um, when cleaning. And like, I really, I clean the sidewalk way better than I clean my house. It was like the real, <laughs> um, there was a lot of water and a lot of like rags and just creating our own system that worked. We just um, were using claws and water in it and it came off. It was just um, more, it was trickier with all the chalk. Um, so a little bit about the time frame. I got grant of the money at the end of April. I had to spend it by June, like I mentioned. Um, so then I had to get I had to spend all my money and do everything before the project was approved. It was just the nature of how I got my grant. So I was hopeful that the city would be open to this. And so I spent it, but then it wasn't approved till later. And then ironically enough in Burlington, any art project in the city needs to be approved by Burlington City Arts. So that, that grant I was gonna apply for in the beginning those were the people that had to approve it. So they approved it. 
And by that point, I was like, let's make this a white cane awareness thing. So um, we finished in the beginning of October. So for me, it took about six months. Um, and the time frame of actually completing the project for me with not as much help as um, I had about three people on and off helping me here and there. And it took me about eight to nine afternoon evenings. Um, ideally, you'd have more people helping you. If you wanted to do full days, you might be able to do in three or four, but if you're just doing afternoon evenings, hopefully it would take about five. It took me about 40 hours. I think the fewest hours it could take would be about 25 to 30. Um, so I want to little, talk a little bit about how the mural has been affecting change. I don't know if some of you saw this, but um, there was a news clip that I wanted to play. It's not my favorite news clip. I don't want to um, influence you all. There's a they they make it a little more inspirational than I had. That's my style, but I think it's worth showing. Um, hopefully, this works. I wonder about my audio. One second, everyone. Thanks for being patient. Um, I can talk about a few other things. Um, another way, I mean, just having this conversation now is um, a way that we're impacting change. I mean, I'm just one person who did this mural and now I'm talking to 50 of you about how to possibly make this mural all over the world. So really, if one person's having this conversation, many of you can. Um, you know what, we're just gonna, we're just not gonna play the video. Oh no, here it is. Allowance for qualified veterans. Veterans benefits are always changing and we've got your back. Sorry the for the ad. Show by um, I also wanted to mention, it sounds like there are already, there are plans in um, Tyler, Texas to have one of these in their new park, which is so exciting. I've heard of other people saying that you'd like to make this. I mean, this would just be so cool if we started seeing these pop up. We'll talk a little bit more about, oh, it's starting. Sidewalk. The goal is to get people thinking about how some of their neighbors navigate the city. Jack Thurston checks it out. The colorful new lines on this city sidewalk point in the direction of greater understanding. You really don't know about disabilities until you engage with someone with one. Shelby Glass is with the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired and is one of the creators of Walk Your Own Path here in Burlington's busy Old North End. Each line traces strokes from white canes belonging to real folks who use those canes every day to check their paths for obstacles. A guide dog's paw prints are here too. Shelby hopes the piece sends a clear message. An independent life is possible for people who are visually impaired and this is a way to celebrate it. The Overlook Cafe in the Vermont Department of Health's headquarters has several staffers with vision disabilities who also participated in making the sidewalk mural. They are confident this same concept could be replicated in cities and towns all over the country as a creative attention-grabbing form of advocacy. There are people with disabilities in your community. They're out and about. They're, you know, they're living their lives too. Basically, we're the same. We just don't have as much vision as you do. According to the American Foundation for the Blind, more more than 32 million American adults reported experiencing vision loss, meaning blindness or trouble seeing even with glasses or contact lenses. What better way to share visually impaired experience than to show it through art? 
The famous Vermont-born musician Grace Potter is on the wide spectrum of vision disabilities. She's legally blind. These are my prescription. So was thrilled with the spirit behind the new artwork. Challenge is, is just a word. It's just a category. It's just a box that you check on your health form every year when you go in for your physical. It doesn't define us. And not only does it not define us, but it, at times it can enrich our lives because there might be certain things about our senses that are failing, but there are other senses that maybe feel and experience the world more vividly. Shelby Glass tells us she wanted the project to spark fresh conversations about navigating Burlington with a disability. She's confident Walk Your Own Path is already doing just that. I think it's really exciting. In Burlington, Vermont, I'm Jack Thurston. All right. Um, okay. Did you know the okay. VA provides a... How do I get back? Um... So yeah, that's just one, that's some publicity that the mural um, has gotten. Um, also coming from this, as I had mentioned, um, I wanted to do a, a disability awareness event. And in Burlington, in October, the studio and I are gonna put on an event that highlights different people's disabilities and gives them the opportunity to um, lead a, a conversation or a, a presentation on different disabilities and will give people um, information on what to say, what not to say, how to approach them, just kind of to create a space for people to, you know, get the tools to learn how to engage with people so that folks with disabilities can feel more welcome and included. Just kind of back to that initial quote. Um, I also wanted to share some um, testimonials from, I, I presented about the mural to some groups um, of visually impaired, older visually impaired Vermonters and they said, it's proactive, not reactive. We need positivity, and this is totally positive. Um, another person said, sighted people get to appreciate the beauty of what a cane does. And in a way, it helps me remember that too. And lastly, uh, the quote that was on my flyer is, the gift of the mural is that it's an invitation to start a conversation. And now what we want, and what we want most is for sighted people to treat us as equals and engage with us. Um, now I'd love to hear what you all have to say of ideas to improve this. So a big one, um, I wanna talk about things that I've thought, and then if you could type in the chat, what ways you think we could, if you are going, if you think we could make more of these, like, what would you do? Um, I think a big one is figuring out how to make it tactile. That was something I had like thought about, but I I wasn't sure what the city was gonna say. Um, so I didn't end up doing that. And I think that was definitely be a benefit and just make a lot of sense for this project. Um, like I said, move the Braille up. Maybe you could have a Braille overlay on the sign. I think that would be really awesome just to, set a precedent of accessible art and signage. Um, I think having like wheelchair lines or walker lines um, would be fantastic. And you could definitely, I'm sure you would be able to tell that with those parallel um, lines. Um, you could have a QR code on the sign, have a tactile map attached to the sign or as part of the sign. Um, you know, making a stamp for the paw prints would be great. Um, and another thing I wanted to mention is, I'm not sure exactly how to do this, but putting it on a wall and not the sidewalk will definitely make this mural last longer just by the fact that um, foot traffic is just wears more than uh, anything on a wall. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear what you all have to say about that. I'm wondering what the chat, so they haven't been looking. Um, 
Shelby, the last comment was, I like the idea of on the wall. Also the inclusive idea you just mentioned about footprints and wheelchair lines. Just mentioned. Yeah, what do, what do other people think of ways to make it better? Yeah, dip canes right into the paint. Yeah, people with altered gates. Definitely. Make it I have a que better. question for you, Shelby. This is Craig. Sure. Uh, the sign you have up front, is it, is it portable? Do you move it in at night or does it stay outside or? It stays outside. It is uh, attached to, to uh, I can't think of the word, but like two blocks of cement and um, with my bike lock. And it's oh, still okay. there since October. <laughs> it yeah. could be moved in and out, um, but no one's taken it or um, done anything to it. Okay. We were thinking about doing a sign kind of like a, um, you know, the historical marker signs, the, the mm. metal, either the aluminum or the brass signs Great. for it to be more, more permanent. Um, yeah. They're a little more costly, <laughs> but, uh, and it'd be on, on posts where even the braille would be up higher, um, you know, where you, somebody could read the belt, braille, whether you put it on the bottom or the top. Uh, we even thought about putting the braille in between the lines mm. of, the, like of the words um, and, and do it that way. That's great. You know, yeah, the, my... the sealer, if, you, if you've if you got, you, you mentioned not using maybe the right sealer. You, do you think if you used a, the, a, a better, more, more durable sealer that it, it would maybe just have to be resealed every so often? Um, I mean, I definitely can't say, but I know that I knew the sealer I was using was not going to last because they were all out like I online and yeah. in person, unfortunately, with, like I mentioned, supply chain issues. Um, so I kind of knew that was the case. I would think it would last longer, though I have to say mural artists <laughs> and the city both said it, it's more challenging. And I also think being in Vermont, being somewhere cold with the salt. Um, We've got the opposite end of the spectrum here. It's very hot. Uh, yeah, I would think it would be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shelby, the next comments uh, were thinking a way to make this with cement would be interesting to where oh. do you order such a sign? Yeah, I can send that info. I mean, I work with people locally because I wanted to spend my community money locally. Um, I don't know about their delivery, but they were called design signs. They're right down the road from my office here. Um, so, but I can send that information. But, oh, one thing I do wanna mention about the sign that was really important. I remember learning, um, Someone had told me along the lines that most braille is wrong. That's like put out into the community. So I just remember someone telling me that. So I went through all the TVIs that, <laughs> I'm not that confident in my braille. So I went through basically like every TVI down the hall and like asked them to like check the edits. And when I talked to the people that were making the sign, I let them know, I was like, I'm going to need my people to review this because it's typically incorrect or just not conjugated correctly. So um, I made sure that was understood in our relationship and they were totally fine with that. So it was heavily edited. Um, Show me just, some of the other Oh, yeah. Comments are, this would make a great project for individual students to make their own mural on paper. Mm -hmm. Very motivational. Mosaic, mosaic tiles and glass beads could be added to the cane strokes. Ooh. Here's a question. Could you put sand in the paint to give it a texture? And does the sign have audio? Yeah, I love, I feel like the sand in the paint would make a lot of sense. 
I don't want to speak to knowing how that would affect it, but I, I think that's a great idea. And the sign does not have audio, but I think that would be great. Um, Burlington has now just started to do a lot of like QR code audio information. So um, I think that would be awesome to add that. Um, Shelby, I mm -hmm. added the designs. I, I added the design signs vt.com oh, link into the chat box. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just curious also how you all imagine um, how we might be able to use this to affect change in our communities. And I mentioned the event I'm going to help put on in October. Um, you know, I one of my goals of this was not only to have representation, um, but it was also to have a precedent of accessible art. Because I think the more we show people how to do that, the more these like little pieces of everyday life that everyone should be, should have access to um, become more regular. Um, so, I mean, we could, these, I think, Part of the sign is to cap, or part of the mural is to capture people's attention and create beauty from something that was once invisible. And once we have people's attention, like what, what do you all think we should do with this? I'm curious what you all have to say if you could share or um, type in the chat. Bethany said she loves the idea of the QR code on the sign. You could link it to a video your students make about the mural and their personal experiences. <laughs> Here's a good idea, Judy. You can enter it into the APH art show. <laughs> I don't know if you have to be visually impaired. We'll have to look at the rules <laughs> of the APH art show. Yeah. Um, Shelby does not have a visual impairment, although her students with visual impairments did contribute mm -hmm. to it. So there may be some uh, gray lines there. Mm. Yeah. That's a good idea. We probably have uh, two weeks to do that, Shelby. <laughs> uh, yes, I can't. We have about five more minutes, Shelby. Yeah. Is there more? So yeah, your... I just want to talk about some takeaways. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, look for community grants when asking for supplies. Make sure you get a tax reduction if you can. Don't do this project in the rain. Um, oh, be conscious. That's a spelling mistake. Um, about how much talk you're using. Use social media. Um, the positive effects of this project can be big. Um, if you do recreate this, please share. Um, I'd love to see it. Um, and I think what's so awesome about this project is that if more people do start making them, they'll all be familial. Like it'll all be clear that they're the same project, but each one will be unique because of different people and their different gates and their different chain strokes they use. And I think that's what makes this really um, doable and exciting. And I just want to say about, um, I wanted to do some opportunities for you guys to ask questions. And I am going to figure out a way I will help you. All. I'll give you all your certificates of attendance for CEU credits. Um, I'm going to share the PowerPoint and the recording. And, um, any links that were helpful here, um, I'll email to you in a few weeks. Shelby, I have a quick question on um, the red tape, I guess. Like, did you have to get permits from the city to paint the sidewalk? And what was that yeah. process like? Yeah, so I just had to apply um, to the town for this. And I've never done anything like this. I just had to like follow the rules and be adaptable to 
their recommendations and suggestions, like in particular the sign. Um, and I had to like create um, a design of how I was gonna block off the sidewalk. I honestly, I, yeah, I just really just did it with, I, I asked a friend who works for the city for some advice, but it got approved. I wouldn't say this is an area of expertise of mine. So um, I just, just do it. And that's all I can say. <laughs> but I did have to get permits and I did have to um, give a timeline of how long I was do it, gonna do it, but I just said what I wanted and it got approved. So um, yeah. I'd, I'd like to add, I don't know if it's different in other places, but in our city, mm -hmm. um, we, my first thought was to put it in one of our city parks and mm -hmm. our city has been doing a lot of renovation of our parks. We've got a lot of really, really, really cool parks in, in Tyler. We're, we're about a hundred thousand, um, in, in size. Um, Rose Rudman park is, is the most traveled, the, the, the highest use park we have in the city. And that's where they suggested they wanted it put first. Uh, but all I had to do was get approval from the director of the parks and recreation oh. so if it goes in a, a city park or great something that you know close to maybe some city basketball courts or if it's through the parks and rec we didn't have to do any certification of anything i just had to get approval from our from our director of the parks and recreation now i'm guessing if it was a city sidewalk things like that that would get into more of the permits and things but you might you might try your parks and rec it might be a little simpler uh, process to get to get approval. I love awesome. that. That kind of takes it back to step one of where. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pick a location first, and as far as the paperwork goes, Parks and Recs are a lot a, a lot easier process than mm. I, I checked out what it would take to do a city sidewalk, and I was like, "Yeah, hey, I really want to do this, but I don't know if I want to go through all that." So let's try the parks. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I was with it but Burlington as I mentioned is like pretty like artsy and progressive um mm -hmm. I don't know if that helped or not but I can imagine they were more open to it but I love thank you so much for sharing that Craig that's super helpful yeah does anyone else have any questions I was gonna just mention that um I'm in Canada I'm in BC and a number of our mobility instructors um, are usually called by the city to assess um, sidewalks and how they do curb cuts and things like that. So if you have a good uh, communication with your city people that do that, there's a good place to start for sidewalk access. Because we have an accessibility group that works with our transit and they're presently working on putting braille on our bus stops and things like that. So if you have connections like that, go with that. You may be surprised what they will do for you. Great, thanks, Deborah. Does anyone else have any questions? It's this two is great. Thank you so much oh, for sharing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And I think it's more powerful on the sidewalk. That's where they're walking. But I like the idea of actually adding a, a wall mural just to solidify the idea and moving it around the city. Yeah, I agree. The the sidewalks kind of like. The whole point but if we want it to last longer yeah that's inspiration that's great oh thank you so much thanks for coming i think you should make sure shelby that you have pictures and you sort of blow them up so that they could go on walls eventually and you put the if the uh person who the visually impaired person who created or helped create the artwork that their name and if they're young, maybe their age, so that there could be then a mural of the pictures. Mm. That's a great idea. Yeah, Even having the, process, the photos of the process. I think if you did a display of how it came to be, it'll be quite historic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I have those few pictures on the sign, but it would be nice to have more or a, yeah, a way to display it, maybe like in the library or something, a local library. Or make them waterproof and, 
and have an outdoor art exhibit. Ooh, I like this. You guys have great ideas. That would be really, yeah. Make really it a awesome. traveling art piece where it goes um, to schools if for um, your cane week, you know, mm -hmm. like or awareness week, any any disability awareness event. I love that. Yeah, I feel like there's as part of this project is about educating sighted people, I think. And so tying it into White Cane Day kind of makes a lot of sense. And it just happened to work out that way with all the approvals. So I really like that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, if everyone's all set with their questions, I just want to thank everyone so much for coming and all your ideas and your feedback. Um, I hope there's a way to save all these comments because I want to see um, your feedback and your everything you said. So thank you so much and thank have you. an awesome weekend. Take care. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks, Shori. Thank you. You rocked it. Happy oh, <laughs> Thanks, my number one cheerleader. <laughs> oh my God, I hope you do save this. Everybody is like, oh, you've inspired me. You've inspired me. Oh. You are a rock star. And I'll tell you, I lost kind of my momentum. I got lost in all the work and everything. And now I've heard your presentation. I'm going to go, we have a, um,